And Charlie, we're just starting the flat. We'll have to do it on machine so it'll be 100% uh, flat for a lamination. What we're doing now is we took a, a flexible uh, piece of metal, put it around what are going to be the foot or post for the fonts, and we put them on a perfectly flat surface, and then we can pour plaster around them to hold them in place. We let that plaster, we did this yesterday, so the plaster would be uh, almost dry. Uh, you can see that it's still quite wet, but um, Rob's just making it level. And then uh, we'll put it on some very wonderful, very old machinery that will, uh, they're old milling machines that will grind and polish, or grind uh, the uh, flats perfectly. And then we'll put in the bowls and we'll also flatten those perfectly so the two, when they're laminated, will be flawless. What he's now doing right now is he's taking metal blocks, putting them around the circumference of the bowl, and the plate that it's sitting on is electromagnetic uh, field. So he will turn that on and then the metal blocks that you see uh, will anchor the bowl and um, so when it goes under the grinding head, it won't move and we'll be able to get a very precise cut. He's taking it under the grinding head, which he then will set so that it'll be very precise when uh, he starts it up. So he's raising it up so that he can get it underneath. I believe this machine was built sometime in the 1920s or 30s. The one next to it was 1919 or 1917, I guess. We're thrilled that uh, we're able to use them and they still work flawlessly. And uh, now you probably just heard that, that has now contacted the bowl itself. So that gives us our starting point. So then uh, you can set it to take off a millimeter or two at a time. And then that will uh, gradually these are just essentially kind of safety bevels. Uh, we shouldn't have any, any problem, but uh, should you, you don't want uh, crystal to be flying around. All he's doing now is starting the water, and then he'll bring the head under. At this time, he's setting how much material he wants to remove. And a whole circle of that wheel is about 60,000. Uh, he likes to watch the amp meter, which shows how much torque is being put on the wheel uh, in terms of how much material is being removed. And we're doing it on a very, very slow basis. What do you got? Um, but now you can see we went from the hand and you can still see the, the light reflection of where that much material has got to come off here and it, we need to come down to about here on this one. So this is the coarse grind over here. This obviously is finer and yet the other machine will take that even to a smoother finish. Now we got the bottom completely flat and parallel with the top surface. So now we can flip it over and that'll guarantee us that the surface we're grinding is uh, going to be perfectly flat.
in the final preparation of the font uh, and its installation, we won't have a flat bottom. Uh, we're going to stopper it into the wood uh, pedestal uh, so that it'll appear as though it's essentially a water uh, source as compared to a water vessel. And so I didn't want to have a flat um, as an end to it, that it was continuous. So fluid is probably the word I was looking for. With a new piece, always uh, there's some on-the-spot decision-making. So, uh, for example, I'm looking at this now, trying to make sure I know exactly the final diameter that I want to have. Then I'll mark it and he'll know how to take care of it from there. In general terms, every finished glass surface uh, has six steps to get it there. There's three grinding steps, three polishing steps, and as you are seeing now, this is a second grinding step. The first was this course that you see here, now a finer one, and yet we'll go to a third machine to make it finer yet. And it's the very same thing that if all of you have tried to we'll use sandpaper, you can't go from a course to a polish. You have to go in steps all the way down and get finer and finer grit. And so uh, our processing here, all of the abrasive tools are diamond, which gives us the, the most precise cut and the, most, uh, the brightest and best finish. You remember we could just barely see that there were glass forms in there. And now uh, we'll keep an eye on this. We probably need to, are we gonna, are you gonna stop right here? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Then, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's difficult to tell from this view, but we still have a very nice radius all the way around on the foot itself, which will come up and tuck into the uh, font and uh, again, give a very, beautiful sort of water effect as compared to uh, in anything structural. Now again the same process, he'll bring it in, lower the head till it's just touching the surface, and raise it up so we can back it out, then he'll set it for how much we want to grind off. And essentially we're just getting the surface to another grit uh, to facilitate polishing. The beauty with diamond equipment is the only thing you need is water with a coolant in it um, added to the process. So it also allows you to have a very clean factory because everything can be recirculated and uh, nothing going out to the atmosphere. This takes a very, very skilled wrist. Now, as you can see, we have not come all the way down, so we'll have a nice radius which you can see the light play there. And when you'll be able to look down in it, you essentially see a water effect all the way through, which with the bottom of the font will continue down and be a constant source of uh, water. And what we're going to end up doing is polishing this and taking it through the steps. But I wanted to show that this is the way we prepare the engravings that will be three uh, locations around the font when it's finished uh, at 120 degrees. And the three obviously is not obviously, but will represent the Trinity. And so when you look in, you'll see the three crosses as well as from the a congregation that you should have a Celtic cross at sort of every view. That's just the water with some coolant in it that keeps the polishing pad uh, wet. He makes it look effortless, but uh, he's putting a great deal of pressure on that. Can you 
you see the difference in that? Difference. And so that surface needs to be brought down to that surface. Then we have two more steps to go after this. As you can see on the rack on the wall, those are the three grinding steps and the three polishing steps. Uh, they all have magnetic backing, so we can change that quickly to another grit without having to remove uh, the piece. And uh, the rest of the world needs three or six rooms uh, to grind and polish. And so uh, obviously you can't get a bit of grit from a coarse anywhere near the medium or the fine. So they uh, have always chosen to just do different spaces. And so, but with diamond technology, all we need is the water and coolant. And we're ready to go to another step. And for those of you who are taking notes, uh, the pad before was the brown pad, and this, oddly enough, is the red pad. <laughs> 320 and 600. That's the grit for those of you that are interested in the more technical end of things. Much better looking. There we go. That's it. Now you can see the difference it makes, and now you can start to see the water effect coming through. And this is nowhere near final polish. So I think even the sound is beautiful because it's so smooth, and yet it's literally grinding a new surface on that. You like it? Every glass body uh, is different chemically and obviously the softness or hardness is reflected in that. And this is a, well it's a very good uh, soda line glass uh, and it's very clear, it is quite hard. I definitely let the younger people uh, check these surfaces because uh, even with readers, uh, I say, oh wow, that looks great. And uh, under another kind of examination, a myriad of fine scratches. So uh, I let the young eyes do the inspecting and uh, know when they have to go back on the pad. All right, all right. The the grit goes for polishing, the more suction it has in terms of pulling the piece actually down to the surface, but it also makes it more difficult to pick up. And obviously if you pick it up on an angle, you start to lose flat. Yeah? It's pretty good. When Rob says pretty good, it's good. Now you start to see the, the waves uh, coming up from the bottom. And you recall that started like this just a short while ago. Wow. Yeah, fantastic. Now unfortunately, because I don't want to get us the water. Right, let's put a little drop. There. A little serious. Yeah. The reason I didn't want to put it on there dry is that um, a tiny speck of dust could scratch it at this point. And so we don't want any scratches, but now you can start to see the effect I'm hoping to. It looks like a big drop of water uh, that will emulate up through the font itself. Here's the finished bowl. That water effect comes all the way up. It does. How did it feel to have that font be made by your husband? Fabulous.